Hi, I'm Heidi Hoger. I am Creativity School's Educational Director, and here at Creativity School, we believe in inspiring and empowering the creators of tomorrow. So it is with pleasure that I invite you to join me and my friend, Maria Van Lechelle, as we discuss her childhood in Amsterdam, her immigration, designing for Coca-Cola, and becoming an author and illustrator. So sit back, relax, enjoy our visit, and don't forget to like and subscribe. so grateful that you have agreed to meet with me I know you have a lot going on and pleasure yeah it's just I know you have so much that we can talk about and so I hope that we're able to hit some things that are important to you and good for the kids and parents and society in general right yeah Yeah, no I would love to I'd, I'd love to chat um yeah I've, I've so enjoyed doing these classes with you and having you like in my corner as a moderator. And oh, yeah. it's really great to like chit chat about other stuff, about like stuff that we don't usually get to talk about. So no, I'm looking forward to this. Well, I'm hoping that with this interview that we kind of help the kids understand that you weren't born a designer and author and an illustrator and uh, an amazing friend. Well, I'm sure you were born that way, but you know, that I, I kind of want to walk them through the process of you know, how you became who you are today, maybe some of the obstacles that you had to face, you know, whether they relate to kids today or not. You know, I know that as an immigrant, that that you have a very different take on everything going on. You are changing history for your family. You are first generation immigrant. Yeah, I, I, um, in fact, I'm not even officially an American citizen yet. I'm working on it. I actually checked the website yesterday and I think by June I'll be able to do my ceremony. So then I'll be officially an American citizen. Right now I'm a green card holder. So yes, I'm very much an immigrant. So is my husband. My son was born here in the US, so he has his US passport. But yeah, I very much am uh, an immigrant and I bring with me all that an immigrant brings, which is experiences and stories from the country that I grew up in. And, you know, I think as storytellers, being an immigrant is actually a really good thing or being a descendant of immigrants, because as storytellers, we always want to bring a certain experience to the to, to the paper or whatever it is, or to the painting or whatever it is that we're creating. And when you have, when you're an immigrant or when you are the child of an immigrant, you have a slightly different perspective. You have like a little bit of distance. You look at things through a certain lens. And I've always looked at America through a different lens than my friends um, that have grown up, that have been born and grown up here. And I appreciate that actually, although it was not always easy. And when we first moved here, it was hard and I was learning the language and I was learning the customs. And sometimes I felt like an outsider. Now that I'm a little bit older, um, I actually love that kind of outsider's perspective because it gives me a little bit of an objective point of view. And of course, now when I go back to the Netherlands, I have that same objectivity because I, I, because I've been here so long, I look at my home country through that lens of being away for a long time. And I see things that my friends over there don't necessarily see or pick up on. So, and I think it's kind of a superpower. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're bilingual. You know, it's such an asset and, you know, kids may not experience it that way because maybe they're frustrated sometimes that they don't quite understand what's being said or they don't quite know how to express what they want to express. But I promise you, once you get a little bit older, it's going to be a really great thing to speak another language. It's like I said, it's also like a superpower. It's a really important thing that will be a huge benefit for the rest of your life. As an artist, you have a third language that you speak, and that is visually. You are able to communicate visually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think people underestimate the power of visual language so much. You have so much to communicate. Absolutely. And I also feel strongly that being an artist is also about observation. It's about like watching people and picking up on things. And you look at like facial expressions and postures 
and like the, the clothing that people wear. And that is what you try to capture in your art. So I believe that being an artist is as much about looking and about observing as it is about being a great drawer or painter. Oh, I love that. My my grandma taught me a poem when I was little. It said, a wise old owl sat in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we all be like this bird? <laughs> and I don't know if she was just trying to get me to, you know, pipe down and listen to something, but I've always kept that in my mind that that is, it is a superpower. I remember teaching my fourth grader um, at the time, you know, we just went to a store and we sat and we watched people. It's what we did. And I taught him to pay attention. Yes, exactly. And it's when I was in elementary school, I also loved to read. I devoured books. I was such a big reader. And reading is a little bit like that too, right? It's being like a little bit of a voyeur and getting a little glimpse of somebody else's life and even pretending to be somebody else for a little bit and to live in their skin. And when you are a curious person, when you are a person who like loves to to observe and to watch other people and to be quiet and to listen, most of those people love to read because reading does the same thing. It, it highlights something, it, it tells us something about other people. And I think, I think that is the most important prerequisite for being a good artist. It's having this curiosity, it's being able to like listen, being able to observe, being able to be quiet and just listen. And if that's all you do as a kid, if all you do is like listen to other people and watch them, you're that's a really great preparation for becoming an artist. Yes, I agree. And just that thirst for learning, learning about people and places and situations and yeah, there's so much to observe. I love that. I love that thought. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. It's a nice thought because it it also makes you realize that anybody can be an artist, right? It's it's anybody can, you know, there is no such thing as you have to be in a, born in a certain place or you have to go in a certain school. No. In fact, what I always say is if you want to be an artist, like go out and do stuff. Even when, you know, I went to, I went to art school, but I specifically chose a school that had like a liberal arts background because I, because I love to read and I love books and I loved history. And I was curious about the world that I felt for me more of like a, like a well-rounded education was better than just only doing art. Now I know for some people that's different. They love just doing art and that's fine. Everybody, you know, can get at this differently. But for me, I I loved having the kind of the broader background. And and also when I was in high school, I still loved to draw, but I was really inspired <laughs> by this teacher who was a Dutch literature teacher. And I already loved to read, but he got me really hooked on theater. Like he ran the theater department. Mm high school. And so I ended up doing theater for many years and I kind of moved away from drawing during those years. And I was so completely obsessed with theater and being in plays. And I actually have, I don't know, because you I came prepared. Up this. So here's my like scrapbook from that time. And here is I played Turam Do. She was the. It's based on a on a on an opera. So yeah, I I from for many years I. Oops, my stuff is falling out. <laughs> but uh, but th- doing theater is also about studying characters, right? Mm-hmm. It's about like reading a play and then trying to figure out, okay, what do these characters look like? What, what do they wear? Like how, you know, how does their makeup look? And how can we express these characters in a way that's really true and authentic to, to the story, which is exactly what an illustrator does. So <laughs> even back then, being in theater ended up being an excellent preparation for being an illustrator later in life, because having that capacity to to read a story and to start imagining what the characters would look like has been has been very very helpful you know in in drawing characters for for um for my my life as a children's book illustrator wow so i'm wondering you know how how did your parents feel about all this 
all the creative endeavors that you were trying to tackle you know were they very supportive of your drawing and your theater and you know they were supportive but at the same time they also really I knew that they expected me to really get my grades up the deal was that I could do this and I could be part of this theater group which ended up taking up a lot of my time as long as I kept my grades up and I did so I did really I did well in school and uh, as long as that as long as I did I I was they were very supportive of my art career. Now, after high school, I chose to uh, study graphic design and we had some conversations, you know, my parents, you know, they, they wanted to make sure that this is what I wanted, but they learned that this is what I wanted. And I, you know, they asked that if I would, whatever I choose, that I'm practical enough to know that there was a job, which I believe is why I chose graphic design and not fine art. And I knew that as a graphic designer, I had a better chance of finding kind of a, a more proper job, which is why I chose graphic design and I ultimately ended up in kind of creative jobs. But yeah, I always felt that they had my back. I always felt that they they we we had talks and they they asked me to think through my decisions, but I'm only grateful that they did because that's proven to be very helpful later in life with many things. I find that that's almost universal. I know there's exceptions to the rule, but you know, when, whenever I visit with one of my friends who who are artists, their parents are always, you know, worried about the starving artist, you know, ask them to either try different options first or to like your parents did to really think through their choices. And uh, you actually led me right into the the second question, which was how, how did all of this art, you know, translate into your career now, which you know, you you already said it. Graphic design was your logical choice. It was so interesting that I now that I look back at my kind of younger years and many of the things that I did back then and I loved doing then, like, you know, reading and drawing still make me profoundly happy today and still really factor in an important way into what it is that I do professionally. And that's what I tell kids. I'm like, you know, the things that you love doing today are most likely are going to be the things that you still love doing when you're when you're old when you're my age and I encourage them to keep doing them you know I I realize that not for everybody it's going to be an option to make a career out of their art if if art is indeed the thing that they love doing but even if uh, you're not an artist professionally you can still do art you can still find time to be creative to be artistic to be an artist and I think that the key to happiness as a well, just an adult is to to look back at the things that you did when you love, you know, when you were a kid and to kind of revisit them and, and, and do those things. So, yes, the things that I love doing then, the things that I did then, they've all contributed to what I do today. And when I'm not teaching for creativity school right now, I'm actually working on an illustrated novel for slightly older kids where they're, it's probably going to be for like young adults. So for yeah. kids who are in high school, but I find that some of the things, the choices that I made early in my life, for instance, not to go to a devoted art school, but to, to get an art education with a, at a liberal arts college, mm -hmm. they help me now because I think what I learned about languages and what I learned about books and about history is really helping me create this illustrated historical novel. So all the things I've learned throughout my life, I feel like, oh, wait, they're all coming together now. And um, all the things that I've done, which maybe some at the time I was like, why am I even doing this? Now I'm like, oh, I'm really glad that I spent those years working for, you know, the Coca-Cola company because I absolutely learned how to make presentations and and how to, you know, convince people and persuade people to do certain things. Yeah, you've really diversified. I mean, we talk about diversifying your portfolio as adults, and that's usually financial. But as an artist, uh, just growing up using classes that were offered to you and diversifying your skills, learning how to do so many things, and then learning how to do some of them very, very well. Exactly. Yeah. And being an artist is having that sort of outsider's perspective, right? It's like, as artists, it's our job to to give sort of a, a fresh perspective on things. So the only way we can do that is if we've had experiences. You begin to realize what your own little spot is and what the perspective is that you can bring to the world. But if you kind of have to go out of your comfort zone and do a little bit of exploration before you're, you're there, I believe. All right. So talking about, you know, your childhood, going through your teen years in high school, 
creativity as an adult. You know, I know that a lot of kids will put down their pencils around sixth grade. You know, they'll stop drawing or they'll be encouraged to stop drawing. You know, prepare yourself for the real world. What are some of the obstacles you faced? And, you know, was that ever one for you that you encouraged? I mean, absolutely. I think, you know, we all face obstacles. And I think even in the happiest of childhoods, you know, the teenage years can be rough or even like the preteen years can be rough and tough. But, you know, especially when your family has gone through hardship and I think every family has its share of hardship. Um, I know my family certainly has had its share of hardship. You know, my parents both are children of, of, of a war. So that comes with its baggage. But I'm here to tell you that art can be your friend and creativity can be your friend. And uh, it can be a fantastic outlet. And especially I think when you're hitting the teen years and it becomes super tempting to put away the artwork because we're so busy, right? When we're teenagers, like schoolwork becomes a lot harder and there are like greater demands and maybe like your parents or your coaches or your teachers are are expecting a lot from you. And it, it may seem like you don't have time for art, but even if it's like 10 minutes before you go to bed or like during lunch, if you can find an artistic outlet, I think it will give you a lifelong place to to process some of this stuff. And artistic outlet can be many things, right? It can be drawing, but it can be singing. It it can be dancing. It can be performing. It can be painting. It, It can be, creativity can take so many different forms that sort of, you know, soothes that creative drive that we all have. I think that's important for adults to think of too. You know, so many of us, like I know as a a child, I loved art, you know, I craved it and I, you know, I took art lessons, but then I got into high school, I got serious with other things, you know, and so I stopped thinking of myself as an artist or a creative, you know, and I think adults, the same as kids need to pick that up and learn how to, you know, let it be a a channel for our emotions or our frustrations or our, our wishes and our hopes. Yeah. And I think a lot of adults, they're hesitant because they think, oh, I cannot draw, which first of all, that's not true. Any, literally anybody can draw, but you just need to do it. Like if, if you don't do it, then that's one thing. But if you try it, then you'll find that you can draw. Because I, I honestly believe that every human being is an artist at heart. And um, we may have different outlets and we may have different ways to express it. But with every single human, there is an artist hidden somewhere in there. I agree. I think there's this inherent thing built into humans. You know, even children, you know, we want to create. We want to bring to life something that we envision or, you know, bring something beautiful into the world. You know, we want to contribute something beautiful to the world. And I think that's just such a part of any human. And a really great tip that I, that I tell, you know, adults, grownups all the time is if you feel like something is missing from your life, go back to what you love doing as a kid. Cause that's probably the thing that will make you feel better today. The things that you love doing when you were you know, three or seven or nine or 12 are probably the things that you love doing when you're a grown up. Um, But you've, you might've forgotten a little bit, or you might be a little bit rusty, but it will still hold the key to happiness for you. I love that advice. I think that is so wise. We're so unrestrained when we're little, you know, in our imaginations and our possibilities. Because we don't, like as adults, we're, we're taught to think of all the reasons why something isn't possible, right? Where something shouldn't be done. But Mm -hmm. kids don't think like that. They say, yes, a million things can go wrong. So what? So what? So they go wrong. It's okay. You know, our lives don't need to be perfect. They can be messy and we can fall down and that's okay. And then we just crumble up the piece of paper and we start over again. At our age, we should know that, you know what? It all gets better eventually. You know, we can pick ourselves up and we can move on and try again. And in fact, it makes us better people to have to like pick ourselves up and to realize it's not the end of the world. You can fall down and still be okay. But not doing something in the first place is way more risky than than doing something and failing at it. I love that advice. I do have one question for you, Maria, that I uh, it doesn't really tie in. I was just thinking about it while I was running my kids around. You grew up I think there's a whole museum devoted to Van Gogh. Yes. Yes. So art is like this. I mean, you cannot escape it when you're in Amsterdam, right? I mean, it is. No, no. I mean, 
It's and it's so part of the way of life there too. I was back, you know, November before the pandemic hit, I was back to 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 be home for my for my dad's birthday. So I was back for a week. And in that week, I went to one play in three museums. And it wasn't even like, because that's what everyone does. Like I would want to meet a friend for lunch. And she was like, hey, let's go to the exhibition at the museum. And then we'll have some you know, coffee and a sandwich there at the museum shop. And somebody else was like, oh, I'd love to see you. But, you know, I have tickets for a play. Do you want to come? And it's such a way of life there. And, and that is the thing I, I really miss. I mean, here it's definitely... I live in San Francisco, near San Francisco. So there's plenty of culture here when there's no pandemic, of course. Um, <laughs> but it's it's more exclusive. It's a lot more expensive. It's not as accessible. Yeah. So so yeah, that's something I, I miss. And and that Van Gogh Museum is amazing. It's it's uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, his whole story just speaks to me. You know, it's just such an emotional powerful like the suffering and the creating that he did it's just amazing to me but all of Holland you know I know I I told you earlier my grandpa lived there for a while and you know the the whole country seems to resonate with this creative creativity Mm. you know where it's like from the flowers to the windmills to the canals to the building colors to architecture and yes. the, yeah even like kids books are so amazingly creative there like I love whenever I go there I bring back a whole stack of kids books because they're yeah they're different um than than here um yeah. they're they're much more artistic now yeah. I'm going to go down this rabbit hole of searching for books yeah, from there, are, there are some <laughs> amazing kids book that I you know I mean it's a different market here but I think some of the kids books that that are getting published there probably wouldn't get published here because they're more risky you know they're more they're more yeah they're more they they don't always have happy endings or they are very abstract I think the Dutch are very comfortable sharing books and art with their kids that is very abstract and it's different here. I, and I think that that goes back to what you were saying about cultural differences. You know, you know, we know that in Russia, art and music are very different than Amsterdam, which is different from, you know, Korea and Japan. And, you know, even even countries that are neighboring countries have very different yeah. cultural differences and, and marketplace, like you said. And All right. Well. That was an amazing. Oh, hi. It was lovely. Thank you. It was a real treat to get to chat with you for a little while and get to talk about all the stuff that that makes me happy. So, um, so yes, that was this was a joy. Thank you. Yes. No, I love our visits and I look forward to our next one. Yes. It will be when you finish your book. Actually, it will be before that. I know that, but yes, I'm going to keep reminding you. I hope. (laughs) Yes, I will definitely speak to you before then. Okay, yeah. Someday, one day. All right. Well, thank Thank you, Heidi. All right. Take care. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that visit as much as we did. If you would like to read more of Maria's books, check out your local library or visit a bookstore near you. For more information about Creativity School, check the links below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can follow more creative journeys and more YouTube videos from Creativity School.